All right, these are the TRX MTs. Uh, we've got the blue Ford, uh, representative of, in my mind, the number one monster truck, the baddest of them all, Bigfoot. And then on the left-hand side, we've got a truck that kind of represents the Tamiya Claude Buster, which was my favorite truck, was really the truck that got me into all of this RC stuff that we've been doing for the last 25 to 30 years. So the problem with these two trucks is, and I'm just going to cut to the chase, is they're great, they look amazing, but they're so slow. So Maddox, what can we do to make these a little bit better? And this should fix the problem. Uh, but we're going to do some testing. So we're going to install the motor on the Ford monster truck. And then we're going to do some testing against the Chevy. We're going to install it on there. We're going to do some side-by-side -side testing, see how much performance we get out of the truck, the difference. First test will be we install the brushless in this system. And then we're going to do some comparisons against this system stock. And then we're going to install the brushless system in this with the high speed gearing. And then we're going to see how they compare against one another at that point. So let's get into it. All right, so what's included in the box? Well, you get the ESC, which also doubles as a receiver, which is nice because it still functions with the normal transmitter. Uh, you've got the little brushless motor, um, which um, has some badging on it. This is an outrunner style, so the actual motor spins on the outside, and this is the portion that is mounted. Uh, so you get that. You get some detailed color instructions uh, that seem to be very, very well written, as Traxxas usually does with their stuff. So some good documentation here. I'm a guy. We will not be using the instructions. And you get a mounting plate. Uh, and that will adapt the motor to the transmission, I'm assuming. We'll figure it out because I'm not reading the right, So we're going to start working through this and I have my handy assistant Maddox. Come here Maddox. Alright, I'm going to hand you the parts that we are going to be going through and you're going to st stack them over here, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and remove the body. Very simple. we got the two clips here, one on the front. If you'll look here, we just push up on that tab. We have the same tab on the back side. You push that. And the body pops off. Maddox, here you go, buddy. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna remove the battery. Just get that stuff out of the way. We don't need it in the way. Got the little strap, we'll remove that out of the way. All right, and then, this is where the power tools come in. Oh, 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 oh yeah. You have to apply the right amount of power, which is full torque at all times. All right, what we're gonna do, is we're going to install the four screws that hold the transmission in place. There are one, two, three, and four. A little tough to see. Uh, we'll try to get a better shot of it when I get the transmission out. Okay, so what we did was we pulled the four screws out and what we need to do is we need to pull the motor wires off they are routed through here um, so we will disconnect these so that we can get this transmission out of place and if you look at the bottom once we remove those screws we're able to slip the drive shafts apart this will allow the transmission to pull out freely okay so we've removed uh, the motor plug from the motor location and then we're going to take some snips and just clip the zip tie that's holding it in place and then we will try to just carefully slide the wire through the bottom of the loom and see if we can then pull the transmission out freely without it getting hung up. All right, so I uh, pulled the four screws out of the transmission and then this plug uh, attaches right here on the motor, uh, on the ESC in this motor port. So that comes out of there just like that. There's a zip tie here. I clip the zip tie and just pull the wire. I think the best thing to do with this, just to make it a little simpler, is I'm going to remove this battery tray, which is just two screws. And I think it will give us a little extra clearance to get this out just a little easier. And I think it will aid in 
getting the transmission out and that would be the ticket if you ask me so now we've got the transmission out with the motor attached and we'll go from there so now that we've got the battery tray out of the way with just the two screws there and it has these two tabs that kind of sit on the inside of the tr uh, the frame channel Maddox is going to have you carefully remove the steering servo plug from the ESC very nice job my man now all we've got to do to remove the ESC is we have one screw here and one screw here and that should pull right out of the way making way for our new electronic speed controller for the brushless system Pretty easy so just the two screws on there so Maddox if you could I'm going to give you the old one and you provide me the new one we've uh We've got the old ESC out, we're gonna place the new one in. It uses the same screws as the ones that came off of the original equipment. So we will just carefully install this back in place. Don't wanna to over torque these. These are very, very small. There's very small hardware right here, so. Just slightly put them in place. What I usually do is take them the rest of the way by hand so we don't strip them out. Very simple. So that's the way that that goes in. Uh, just the screw here and the screw here. Okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and disassemble the transmission. We've got two drive shaft yokes here. We're going to move them out of the way just to make this a little simpler. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got the one screw here, the other screw there. And the drive shafts do appear to be equal length, so it's not a concern uh, to get these things mixed up. I think they'll, uh, I think they'll look. I think they're exactly the same. So let's find out. Pull these two screws out of here, and these should slip right off. All right. So we're going to remove the yokes. That's what they look like. Just plastic. All right. And then we'll remove the other, and let's just see for. They are exactly the same length, so you don't have to worry about mixing them up. Okay, our next step is we're going to separate the transmission. It looks like we've got four screws here, and we'll pull this gear case in two pieces. Got the four screws out, and now we're going to carefully separate this, and we'll see how many of these parts we can lose. All right, I'll just carefully pull the two apart while trying to get this all on video. Oh, looks like we've got bushings on the inside uh, instead of bearings. So not a fan of that. Uh, the new gear set that I have does have bearings with it. So when we upgrade the other transmission, we'll be replacing these with bearings and then I will come back and put bearings inside of here. So we've got two screws that hold the motor in place. We're gonna go ahead and remove those and then we'll place the new motor on. Looks like they have a little Loctite on them, so when we reinstall, we will go ahead and use Loctite. At that point, the motor just pulls right out of the way, and that is what we're left with. Okay, so on the inside of this motor adapter, we have a couple of screws inside there. Um, one will hold the motor. The two screws will hold the motor to the mounting plate, and then the other two will allow us to affix it to the transmission. On these screws, it looks like they come set up already with blue Loctite. So we'll go ahead and set those in place and we'll mount the motor to, to this. And you gotta do this real carefully because these screws are very small and they're very delicate. So I will go ahead and do that by hand. Kinda tough doing this on camera. Okay, so we've got the motor plate in place, just kinda push it in place. And then I'm just gonna get that one started. And we'll place the other screw in there and then we'll tighten them down together. Again, this does not require a whole lot of pressure because these are extremely small. So now that I've got these set in place, we'll go ahead and install it on the transmission. Okay, so that's what it should look like. All right, everything spins freely. So we're going to place that on like so. And it looks like it all lines up the way it's supposed to, so. Okay. 
Again, this is really, really small screws and hardware, so don't need to go crazy with the tightening. Just snug it up, make sure that it doesn't feel loose or you have any play. Everything is seated nice and tightly. Okay. Next, I'll start placing the gears back in place. This one will go here. You see that it lines up nice and cleanly. Looks like the mesh is perfect, so Draxa seems to know what they're doing. It looks like they got it right thus far. Okay, and we'll take the gear case and we'll place these back together, just making sure that everything kind of goes back where it came from. And as we're putting the gear case together, spin the motor just slightly, so that way all the gears kind of mesh back in place. We'll validate that transmission spins. Looks like everything is doing what it's supposed to do. So we'll go ahead and place the four screws back in and this part should be done. And we're gonna finish up the tightening portion by hand as not to over tighten for the gear case. All the screws are back in place. Well, let's reinstall the drive shafts. I'm gonna place the drive shafts back in place. Like that. One. And two. Okay. And these are pretty quick to tighten. So just be cautious not to throw it, strip them out because it is all plastic. Okay. So the drive shafts are now in place. And if we spin the motor, you can actually see the drive shafts turning. So, all right, let's go ahead and set this back in the truck. So I think the trick to getting this transmission in place is I put the, I put the front drive shafts yoke in first, and then I'm kind of pivoting the transmission in place while guiding the rear uh, half shaft in place. So got that one in place, this one in place. I started with the one on the front. So, and that seems to be the easiest way that I could figure to do it. So now the transmission is kind of seated back in place. I'm gonna place the four transmission screws back in there and we'll secure the transmission. So place the four screws back into the transmission mount. Okay, so we're gonna just tighten those up. Yeah, let me see something here. There we go. That might provide a little extra light. So there's the one, two, and three, and four. And if you're having trouble seeing them on the uninstallation, I think you've got a better shot at them now. This motor takes up a little less space than the other. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten all this back down here. And then we will use some movie magic to make it look like it was a lot faster than it was. So what we kind of did here was threaded the motor wires back through the battery plate, okay? And then this goes in fairly simply. We're just gonna take these wires and we're going to clip them in this little wire retainer that is built onto the battery plate. That kind of just keeps everything neat. So one and two, okay? And then this, this just kind of locks into the chassis and then we'll put the screws back in uh, it kind of mounts in there pretty easily, so that there, and then kind of locks in just like that. You can see that the wires were kind of kept nice and neat. I think we will kind of adjust them a little bit after, but for the time being, they are good, and that is the way that that will look. We'll pop the two battery, uh, the two screws inside there, and mount this battery tray. And then we'll we'll make all the wire connections after. Okay, so we got the battery plate mounted back up. We've got our wires routed through the battery plate. And then the only thing I want to just make mention of specifically is, is that this motor spins here like so. So we just have to make sure that when we tie all this up, we make sure there's adequate clearance between the motor and the wires so we don't rub through the wires and create a different issue. Okay, so we're gonna connect the steering and then we will connect the motor. All right, so this has three pins, if you look here. 
So we've got three pins there, and if you look at the orientation on here, you see that that one's blank. So we just wanna make sure that when you seat this in here, that it goes in like that. Okay, we're gonna start the binding process. So we'll attach the, uh, the radio, uh, your, your, your original radio to the new ESC. So in order to do that, we're gonna hit the set button, hold that down, and then we're going to turn the transmitter on. You'll notice a, the red light will start blinking. That puts that in bind mode. Uh, for the ESC, it's kind of the same process. You're gonna hold the button down, and then you're going to plug the power in from the battery like that and then they are bound so that is now attached and everything appears to be working let's see what type of wheel speed we get out of this interesting super quiet let's see what kind of slow speed we can do Interesting. And just to compare it to the original. So there is the one truck with the original and there is the truck with the new brushless system in it. I'm gonna do a little comparison. So there's the brushless system. And there is the brushed system. Brushed, brushless brushed brushless okay all right so we've completed the installation it was i think relatively simple took a few minutes there's always those little spots that are tough to get to uh because it's a it's kind of a smaller truck but ultimately um not too bad so uh we're going to do a running video here shortly and You'll have to uh, you'll have to come and check out that video. We'll compare the two trucks and see how much of a benefit you get from one versus the other. So if you like what you saw, do us a favor, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if we find that there is value, we will continue making some videos and we'll get into some bigger projects.